How you doing guys? Welcome back to the Kimron channel. So it's been a while since you guys have seen this one. This is the XH20D. This one comes in the, uh, the Battleship Gray, which looks really good in my opinion. So on this machine, you know, we work with the factory on this and there's different options out there. There is a Kubota engine option, but we're not gonna do that. We actually bought one with a Kubota and um, it's underpowered. It just doesn't do it. They have to put a smaller pump on it. It just doesn't work. Um, so we're only gonna run the Yanmar in here because it's got more horsepower than the Kubota in this series. You can fit more engine for your money in there. Um, this is a great price machine. This one comes in at uh, roughly 3,500 pounds. It's got the, uh, the super long tracks here that extend out behind it. So you get kind of that zero radius effect. It's just, it's overall, it's, it's been a really successful machine over the past year. So today we're gonna go ahead and take this one out and do a little bit of simple digging with it and just kind of re-review it and uh, show it off again. Cause this is one of my favorite machines for sure in this size segment. So let's go ahead and take it outside and get straight to work. All right guys, we'll go ahead and get it started up and put it to work. So the first thing you're gonna notice on this machine is it's pretty quiet. So that's another thing I like about it. Now I haven't operated this one in a long time, so I'm gonna have to kind of freshen up my skills here. So you've got the side swing and I just want to demonstrate on this one the way the side swing works. So on the stick right here, we have a button. So normally if you're rotating here, you're just moving the cab. The minute you hit that button, it switches over to side swing. So I like that. Some guys do, some guys don't, but I think it's a pretty cool feature. Now, swing all the way over there we go if you were digging against a wall right here and I know I show this in every video it's kind of repetitive I'm gonna just kind of cut a line right here to show you draw a line in the dirt basically so as you can see that line right there is actually outside of the track width so if you had a wall right here, you would be right up against that wall digging. And that is where side swing comes in handy. On this particular machine, the side swing is going to be standard. So go ahead and swing over and go back to normal mode here. Get it in the middle. All right. And in this video, I'm gonna kind of dumb things down a little bit and we're gonna kind of just go over the, the fundamentals of digging as well, because we don't ever do that. I kind of just always take off digging and everything. So when you're digging dirt, you're basically, you're cutting earth. So your bucket's coming in and it's cutting like you're slicing layers off. So that's what I'm gonna kind of demonstrate here is we're gonna come in, we're gonna make our cut and then we're immediately curling the bucket here and then we're gonna come forward and we're just taking a slice out, just like that. So, there you go. Then we'll come back in here. We're gonna curl right there and we're gonna cut and just take out a slice. Man, I like this machine. Such a powerful little beast. We'll reach on out there, we'll curl our bucket, and we'll come in, make a cut, and then come up. Dump our dirt. Curl, cut, nice full bucket. Now, I'm gonna even push it a little bit. We're gonna turn this engine down. I wanted to show you on the RPMs. There's full throttle, 
super quiet. I know you can hear me just fine right now because I'm confident this is a quiet machine. But we're going to go ahead and lower it down right here. And we're going to pretend that we're doing some precision stuff. We'll lower it a little bit more even. Say we're up against some technical stuff like some buried pipe right here and we're kind of trying to avoid it. You're able to kind of do detail work and make your cuts without tearing up stuff at idle. Now, the reason we're able to do this is because we use premium upgraded pumps on our machine. That's how we're able to do that. A lot of these machines, they're not going to have that. Let's go even lower just for the fun of it. Now I'm pushing it. May not do, be able to dig this low. Well, I'll tell you what, it proved me wrong. We're digging at basically idle. On a small machine like this, that's not normal. <laughs> You usually can't dig at idle on a smaller machine, but there you have it, folks. It, it's doing it just fine. So if we were doing some detail work and we needed to kind of move slow, make sure we're not hitting stuff, or even if we're uh, a new operator that's kind of learning, you know, here at idle, we can sit here and move and, and kind of concentrate and we have nice smooth movements. Wow, that's impressive. <laughs> we are literally at idle and it's not even struggling. Reach way out here. Get us a big old bite. Let's push it. That's how I am. We got to push things to the limit. There you go. Look at that. That's at idle. All right, let's kick it up a notch. So we'll kick it up now. Say we just need to dig a nice long trench and move pretty quick. Doing a water line repair or something like that. Obviously, you can turn it up and move pretty quick if you want. Now, obviously, I'm not going to be a smooth operator with it cranked all the way up at full throttle here, but this thing's a digging son of a gun at full throttle, and I mean, it just rips through like it's nothing. And this isn't really my digging style. I like to be about mid or half throttle personally. But I just want to show you that we can obviously do work at, you know, low, mid, or high. So let's try something different real quick. This big old rock right here, even our big uh, big machines kind of struggle with it. I know we can't pick it up, so I'm not even gonna, I'm not even going to try. This is probably every bit of 800 to 1,000 pounds, so I'm just going to try to drag it. May work, may not. Yep, it works. We'll just move this rock on over here. Say we're wanting to just you know, move this big old monster. It's in our yard and we're wanting to get it, you know, somewhere else. Obviously, we can do that with this machine, not a problem. So, there you go. Set our blade down on that. All right, guys, you kind of get the point there. This one never fails to impress. This is, uh, again, this is our XH20, two year warranty. Um, one of my favorite Kimron machines. It's got the Yanmar engine. It's got the extended tracks. Of course, every machine we offer is gonna come with the hydraulic thumb that folds all the way back out of your way. This one has the uh, multi-wave diverter valve for hooking up your attachments like your, your auger, your jackhammer stuff like that. You also have a shutoff switch right there, just like that. 
that's going to shut off the fluid flow to the thumb and it's going to redirect your fluid to your set attachment that you have hooked into it. So guys, where you need to be is kimronsales.com. It's going to show our pricing. It's going to show our full lineup, our different options, specifications on these machines. We also have dealers around the country. We don't have a ton of dealers because we're very discretionary on who we allow to be a dealer because we want to have top service and top quality equipment. So where you need to be for our dealers is kimron.com slash dealers, I believe. And that's going to give you our dealer lineup. Give them a call um, to get your XH20. So as you can see, does a pretty good job. I'm super impressed. Usually a small machine like this, you can't dig at idle. That's not, that's not really normal. There's some out there that can do it, but that's the thing, guys. We upgrade the pumps. We spend that extra money, we check every box and get premium parts and premium stuff to where these machines work well. That's another thing when I say parts. We keep all parts in stock. If we don't have it in our warehouse here in Oklahoma, possibly one of our dealers have it, or we can get it here in about two weeks. That's the thing. Booms and big parts like that, we can get here in time, maybe not two weeks, but most guys if they ever were to break a boom, we haven't seen it yet. Unlike a Cat or a Kubota, they usually have a fab shop repair it because the boom is so expensive, it's just not worth it. And it's cheaper to have it refabricated. So that's all I've got for the day. Thanks for watching.